celebrity, you know, you basically live and die by ratings, sales, you know, it's your public, it's they decide whether they like you or not. And when you're releasing something like a new album, a collection, a greatest hits, a tour, it's all measured on how many tickets do you sell? What are you making for the company? Are you value? When you're a member of the British monarchy, that really doesn't come into it, you know. Anybody who wishes to sit down with His Royal Highness, His Majesty the King, it would be an honour because you would always have that on your CV and it would be referenced by, you know, for many years to come. That's the deal. But in this new sort of social media 21st century world, even Prince Harry is now finding that he's not immune to this scratching around to see exactly what is his celebrity value. As ever, let me explain. Hi, good morning, Neil Sean here. Nice to see you. I hope you're all keeping well. We've had a plethora, haven't we, of interviews uh, from Prince Harry over the last few days. 60 minutes with Anderson Cooper for like 60 years, didn't it? Never ending, went on and on and on, you know? And they never ask any questions, have you noticed? What I find strange about all of these people who've interviewed the former royal known as Prince Harry, they very much like to build themselves as journalists, you know, were serious journalists. Yet time and time again, you might as well have had just somebody from a showbiz background, and I don't mean that badly because it's a job I've done, just simply asking the questions you've been given to ask. You're not going to get interrogating, you're not going to ask anything that they don't want to know. I mean, there was nothing in the Tom Bradbury um, interview that was shocking, was there? Nothing in the Stephen Colbert. It's just usual sort of therapist claptrap that Harry's been allowed to speak about and carry on talking about. But it's interesting, you see, because then what they have to do with these particular shows, and if you remember, just before the end of last year, Meghan Markle was allegedly going to be sitting down with an NBC chat show host to help promote some of her product. I've lost interest in what it was, but the deal was flashed up on social media and then very quickly pulled because they could not agree on the fact that uh, she wanted all of the questions in advance, rehearsal time, the audience to be handpicked, and by that they mean normally your fan club. I don't know where they'd find one from Megan right now, do you? But there you go. And that's really how it works. Even on the Colbert show, make no mistake, all of those people giving Prince Harry a standing ovation were very selectively picked. Everybody was frisked, checked everything to make sure that you were on track and online with what they were promoting. You get the picture. But what's interesting here is, even now the most difficult of TV bosses are realizing that actually Prince Harry is bad box office, as they call it. Not one of those shows really rated incredibly well, despite all the hype. Now, a lot of them, of course, will hit back, particularly to me, and say, oh, it's all about the social media clicks. Well, yes and no, but you've spent the money on the studio, uh, the time, the audience, the security, the skits, you know, particularly with Stephen Colbert. Even roping in Tom Hanks couldn't make a difference to the ratings, which have turned out to be absolutely dire. And again, you know, as we told you the other day about the book sales, everything can be manipulated. But now the bigger problem for Prince Harry moving forward is he's now rolled, if you like, his best dice. This is it. This is what he's got to sell. If you can't get a record breaking audience with that, then very quickly the audience are going to tire of you even faster. And for TV bosses, they have to decide, is Harry really worth the booking? Looking at their ratings, which will be published very soon in the trades, I'm guessing they'll think once again whether that truly is the case. For now, though, this is a rolling news story, and as ever, I will keep you posted. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.